Today, we're going to learn how to do triplanar projection with normal maps. Let's go. Before we get into today's shader, the first thing that we're going to do is set up a test environment uh, like this one here, which will allow us to compare our results uh, with a regular normal map shader uh, to make sure that we're getting all of our projections and our math correct. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a really simple shader uh, like this one here. Uh, I've just applied a normal map to my texture sample, plugged it into the normal socket, and then I uh, multiplied the UVs by uh, four and two uh, just to tile the normal map a little bit more. So I've applied this really simple normal map shader to uh, this sphere on the top. So I just made a really simple scene and added two spheres to it I applied uh, the simple normal map shader to the one above, and I applied the shader that we're gonna be working on today to this sphere below. So this shader that we're gonna be working on today is the one that we've made in all of our previous videos on triplanar projection. So I just copied the shader from last week into a new file, and the only changes that I made here are I placed our cobblestones normal map into our three texture samplers uh, instead of that grid texture that we were using previously. And then instead of passing the results into base color, I'm passing them into normal here instead. So we can pick up right where we left off uh, last week. And if you haven't watched the shader tutorials that I've made the last couple of weeks, I'll put a link to those down in the description. Be sure you go back and and watch the, the videos on how to create regular triplanar projection before jumping in to, uh, to see how to make triplanar projection on normals. If you don't watch those first, you'll, you'll be kind of lost. All right, so the last thing that we need to do in our test scene before we can proceed is I'm gonna switch this. Right now it's set to the standard lit mode, and I'm gonna switch this to buffer visualization world normal. And what this is gonna show us is colors that represent the values of the normals. And one thing that it's gonna make really obvious is that uh, the values that we're currently getting on our projection sphere are incorrect. Especially if we come around here to the back. If we compare our values here, you can see on our reference sphere, there's blue on the top of these bumps. And here the blue is on the bottom of these bumps. Maybe if we look down here at the bottom. Anyway, my point is uh, these colors don't match and that means uh, the projection is coming across wrong. And so the real question is, why is that happening? And the answer is that uh, we're projecting normal maps that are intended to be in tangent space and that means they're relative to the UV coordinates on the mesh, and we're projecting them in UV space. So we're, we're putting these normal map pixels onto the sphere in a way that they weren't intended. And in order to make that work, we need to, we need to come up with a plan <laughs> to, to improve that so that this will work. However, uh, before we do that, there is one other thing that I want to talk about, and that is uh, I've had a couple of you make comments uh, in previous week's tutorials saying, hey, we already have built-in nodes that do this. In Unity, we have the triplanar node, and in Unreal, we have, we have the world-aligned texture and the world-aligned normal node. We can just use those. Why are we learning to do this uh, since we already have a node that does it? And I want to show you why. So what I've done here is I've brought in the world align normal node, and this is the node that's built into Unreal that comes with Unreal for doing uh, triplanar projection of normal maps. So I attached my normal map to it. I hooked up world absolute world position, and I set the use high quality normals here to true. And so this is basically all the setup that you need to do uh, world aligned normals. So let's bring this guy down and wire him into uh, our normal socket from the XYZ texture output. I'm going to connect it to the normal and we're going to take a look at the results that we get here in our test scene. 
Okay, so there are a couple of issues with this. Uh, the first thing that I see is that these colors that are projected don't match our sphere at all. And uh, basically it's really obvious that the normals are incorrect. These normals are correct from a single normal projection. Uh, if we are projecting the, the normal map from the X, the Y, and the Z, uh, these normals would be correct from those axes. Or in, in other words, uh, if these normals were projected onto a box that was lined up to the world, they would look correct. Uh, but because they're projected onto a sphere, uh, they don't work because they don't bend with the shape of the sphere. They're staying flat as if they were pro being projected directly from uh, the each of the axes that, that they're coming from. Whereas uh, on our reference sphere, they're nice and smooth. The other issue that I see here is that um, the projections are unevenly projected. You can see that the top and bottom projections are taking a uh, disproportionately large uh, amount of space and the side and front projections uh, are uneven. Basically, some of the projections are, are being projected on more surface area of our model than, than, than the others. And so uh, basically there are two reasons here why uh, the built-in world align normal node is not giving us the results that we want. And because of that, it's important to understand the underlying workings of these nodes. So if they're not doing what you want, you can do something else to make them better. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's go ahead and hook our shader back up and we'll move the, the world align normal node out of the way and let's get started uh, working on our shader. So, there are a couple of things that we need to do in order to fix this so that our projected normals uh, are uh, uh, work correctly in tangent space, even though we're projecting them in world space. So I'm just gonna back this up to, to give us a little bit more room to work. What we need to do is we need to, um, so we're projecting these normals in world space and so we need to adjust the normal data itself after we've sampled it to move it into world space. And then we need to transform it back to tangent space uh, because Unreal expects normals coming in to be in tangent space. So that's the first thing that we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and add a transform node here. And I'll set the transform node to transform our normals from world space to tangent space. Now we haven't done anything uh, to change them into world space yet. And so when I first hook this up, it's gonna obviously look correct because our normals aren't in world space. Um, but it'll it'll show us what's wrong so that we can then fix it. So you can see that now that we've transformed our normals from world space to tangent space, they all of them look like they're being projected from the top down. If we look at our reference sphere here, and this isn't a, a very good spot to look at it because it's kind of where all of the UV coordinates come together. But you can see that the colors on our reference sphere from the top match the colors on our regular sphere on all sides. And what that means is that our top bottom projection or our Z projection uh, is working correctly, uh, but the others aren't. And so we need to do two things. We need to combine these normal maps with the world space vertex normal and we need to swizzle them or rearrange their channels uh, so that they're um, so that they appear that they're projected correctly in world space so let's go ahead and do that uh, let's start off with uh, so we have the x-axis projection or the side projection we have the front projection and we have the top and bottom projection. Let's start off with the top and bottom projection since it's, it's the simplest. Um, I have a couple of nodes down here. I have our vertex normal in world space and we're splitting it out by components. And then I have the sign of the vertex normal in world space. And uh, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, we talked about how the sign node returns one 
uh, for a positive value and it returns negative one for a negative uh, value. And so what these nodes here are gonna do for us are allow us to flip things either on the front or the back because our sign node is telling us are we projecting on the front of this particular axis or on the back of the axis? Well, we'll get to use the we'll get to using these nodes in a minute. For now, we're going to use these nodes uh, where we're um, taking the x, the y, and the z of our world space normal. So we're going to combine those with our uh, with our z projected normal map. So in order to combine these, I need to add a append many node. And the way that we combine normal maps is by multiplying um, the X and the Y, and then, I'm sorry, adding the X and the Y, and then multiplying the Z. So we're gonna add an add node here. This is for the X, and another add node for the Y, and then a multiply for the Z. All right, so we're gonna connect our add, our add, and our multiply. So now we're gonna take our red channel and we're gonna multiply, or we're gonna add that to the red channel of our world space normal map. We're gonna take the green channel and add that to the green channel of our world space normal map. And we're gonna take the blue channel and we're gonna multiply that by uh, the Z component or the blue channel of our uh, world space vertex normal. So this is how we combine two normal maps together, add, add, and multiply. And so now we can take the results of this, the RGB, and wire this, I'm just gonna wire this directly into our transform normal vector. We're gonna skip uh, the results of our other two now, nodes for now, uh, just so we can see what our Z projection is doing. So I'm gonna save this and let's take a look at our result. These are uh, being projected from the top down and you can see that now our colors are matching more closely. So if we look at, um, if we look at our colors from the bottom, you can see we kind of have this yellowish green down here and we kind of have this bluish pink up here and the colors fall off really nicely. And the reason for that is because we're combining uh, our projected normal map uh, with the results of our vertex normal. So we're able to get this, this really nice smooth gradient uh, from top to bottom. Now there is one thing that we need to adjust in order to make sure that our normal map is lined up correctly. I need to multiply the red channel here. And the reason that we're doing this multiply is because on the back side or the bottom, our red channel is flipped and we need to unflip it. So here's the part where our um, our, our sign node is gonna come in. Uh, we know that uh, we're projecting on the Z axis in this operation here. And so I need to multiply our red channel by the sign or the, the value, whether it's flipped or not of my Z axis. And this is going to set my red channel on the back side or on the bottom of my projection uh, to be rotated correctly. So I'm multiplying um, my red by the Z of the sign of my world space normal. And that's gonna flip that, but only on the bottom. It will be correct on the top and then we're making it correct on the bottom uh, on the side of the axis where uh, it's projected through to the other side. And you can see now that I've got, on my reference sphere here, I've got pinks on these sides of the bumps and the same thing here, pinks on these sides. All right, so we've completed one of three axes. Now I hope that you can see uh, right off just from this first example that Today's tutorial is going to be a really good recipe for spaghetti. <laughs> and the reason that I say that is because we're we're going to create tons of these wires kind of going everywhere. Uh, and it is going to be pretty complicated. I hope you don't mind and that you're able to follow what these things are doing, uh, even, there, even though there's uh, a whole lot going on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move these nodes down and out of the way. 
um, because we're com we're done with our Z axis projection. And now I'm gonna uh, move these nodes that, uh, let's see, let's just clean up a little bit here. I'm gonna move these nodes down and move these nodes up so that we can use them for our next axis. The next one that we're gonna do is, uh, is our Y projection. And this one's gonna be a little bit different. So we know that we're going to be combining with our world space vertex normal. And so I'll go ahead and move this up. However, um, we're gonna be uh, rearranging uh, the X, Y, and Z components here uh, to match the axis correctly. And also, instead of add, add, multiply, we're gonna be doing add, multiply, add. And the reason for this is that we always multiply the axis that's in the direction of the projection. So here we're working on Y, and so we're gonna multiply the Y axis, and we're gonna add the X and the Z. So I'll go ahead and hook up the components for our normal map, or, or for our vertex normal here. So here's our vertex normal, splitting it out into X, Y, and Z. We're gonna add with X, multiply by Y, and add with B. And then like I said, we're gonna swizzle this one or rearrange the channels. We're gonna use red and blue and green. So you can see here we're swapping the blue and the green channels. So now that we've combined it with our uh, world space vertex normal, let's go ahead and plug the results of this one into our transform vector and take a look at the results that we're gonna get in our sample scene over here. Okay, so the Y axis here is projecting from the front. And let's take a look at how our colors line up. Uh, you can see here that um, the overall kind of yellowish green color is looking good. It matches our reference sphere. But if we look at the, the colors that are being created by our normal map, uh, I'm getting kind of a kind of a blue color from the bottom of the cobblestones, um, but here I'm getting that blue blue color from the tops of our color of our cobblestones, and so there are a couple of things that we need to do to adjust these results so that the the results from our projection match the results from our uh, from our good uh, regular tangent space normal map example. So the first thing that we need to do is uh, we're just gonna take our green channel and multiply it by negative one um, because we need to flip this channel um, basically uh, in all cases. So instead of the regular green channel, I'm just gonna flip the green channel uh, and pass that in instead. And then the other thing that uh, we need to do is just like we did with our Z axis down here, we need to flip the red channel when it's on the on the opposite side. So I'm gonna take the red channel and multiply it. And we're gonna multiply it by uh, the, uh, the, the Y component of our sign to flip it on the back side. So we've got the X coming out of our normal map and we're multiplying it by the Y of the the sign of our vertex uh, normal in world space. And why are we doing that again? It's because we need to flip this on just the, the inverted side. All right, let's save this and take a look at our results. Okay, so now you can see that we've got the blue and the pink on the top of the uh, cobblestones, uh, the same as our reference. And if we spin around to the other side, our reference kind of has this yellow down at the bottom and blue on the top and the same thing with our reference here. And so we've been able to successfully convert um, our Y projection to world space and combine it with our world space normal. All right, I'm gonna rearrange things again. I'm gonna take our vertex normal data here and move it up. 
And then I'm going to take our Y projection nodes and move them down because these are complete. And then I'll move our the nodes that we need here for our projection just kind of, uh, let's see. <laughs> this is getting a little bit messy, uh, but I hope you'll bear with me. Okay, I'm going to move these nodes into place so it's easy to combine them with our normal map in the X projection. All right, the last thing that we need to do is um, the same operations that we've done on our Y and Z, we need to do on our X projection. I'm gonna copy uh, these nodes from our Y projection because we're doing the same thing again. Except in this case, uh, we're doing a multiply add add. So I need to reverse the order of these nodes here so that we're multiplying our X, adding our Y, and adding our Z. And in the case of our um, X projection, we're gonna use blue, red, and green. So we're swizzling um, blue as X, red as Y, and green as Z. And then we're gonna multiply um, by the X and we're going to add the Y and add the Z of our world space vertex normal. All right, that, let's wire this in and take a look at the preliminary results that we get. And you can see that for the most part, uh, our colors are matching on the front and the back. We've got kind of a blue green here and a uh, pink and yellow here. But if you take a look at our reference, we're getting yellow on the bottoms here, and here we're getting yellow on the tops, which we means we need to, uh, we need to flip around a couple of things. Uh, so the first thing that we're gonna do, uh, really simple, is we're gonna take the green channel and multiply it by negative one. And then we're gonna wire that into um, the Z here. So we're flipping the green channel in all cases and the red channel, we're only going to flip on the back side. So instead of multiplying by negative one, we need to multiply by, uh, the red of the sign of our split comp uh, of the, the sign of our vertex normal, uh, just the X component. So that's going to flip our red, but only on the back side. And then we're going to wire that in uh, right here to our first add. All right, so if we save this and take a look at our results, uh, now we've got yellow coming from the bottom, just like on our reference sphere. And on the front, we've got yellow coming from the bottom and kind of the purpley blue coming from the top. So everything matches. All right, so let's just review again really quickly for our X projection. Uh, we're combining with our world space uh, vertex normal with a multiply add add. We're taking the red channel and flipping it just on the back side, and we're inverting the green channel on both sides. And I'm going to rearrange uh, our. Now that we're done with all of our wiring, I'm just going to pull these down to the bottom, and I'm going to pull these back up into position here so we've got our x y and z projections lined up and then let's wire these uh, into our lerps so we can lerp between the x and the y projection and then the result of that we're going to lerp between that and our z projection and then i'll wire that into our transform vector from world space to tangent space so with this operation here, we're transforming from our tangent space uh, normal map into world space. And then with this operation here, we're transforming back from world space to tangent space again. Uh, so with our Y projection, we're doing an add multiply add. And we're flipping the green channel in all cases, and we're flipping the red channel uh, only on the back sides and with our z projection we're doing add add multiply and we're flipping our red channel 
only on the back sides. So those are the adjustments that we need to make to um, to transform our tangent space normal map into world space for the X, the Y, and the Z projection. Then we lerp them together just like we did in previous weeks, and then we transform them. So <laughs> a lot of complex math going on here, but when we put all of this together, what we get is a projection that's projecting our tangent space uh, normal maps in world space uh, and then transforming them correctly so that unlike the world aligned uh, normal node that uh, ships with Unreal, uh, with this method, we get a normal map projection that has nice smooth gradients uh, and evenly projected uh, X, Y, and Z uh, portions uh, that all have the same uh, size. And we've got a, a projection that's working really well. So I hope that you could follow this. <laughs> I know that this is pretty complicated to do all of this, um, but if you can, <laughs> you're gonna end up with a normal map projection uh, that works great and that you can use in all cases. And the last thing that you would wanna do in order to use this well is to convert it into a material function. And you can look at last week's video for how to do that. Basically, you can just copy all of the nodes here into a new material function and that then add inputs for the things that you want to adjust, uh, like this value here that controls, sorry, this value here that controls um, the blending zones uh, and maybe the value that uh, controls the scale of the projection, uh, which would go right here. Um, you just add a couple of inputs um, to your material function uh, to allow those to, to be tweaked ex externally. All right, so if we switch our view back from world normal to lit, uh, you can see that uh, no matter which side we look at our sphere from, uh, none of the normals are inverted or flipped and they all work exactly as they should. So that's how you do it. And let's switch over to Unity and I'll show you the same thing in that engine. All right, here we are in Unity and you can see that I've set up a test scene that's really similar to the one that we created in Unreal. We have uh, our two spheres here and the one on the right is the one that is using our projection shader and the one on the left is the one that's using our very simple uh, normal map uh, material. So I can switch uh, my viewport into debug mode for normal maps, the same as I did in Unreal. If I come up here to window and pick analysis rendering debugger, and then I click on material here. Now under uh, common material, I can drop this down and pick normal, and that's gonna show me the normal maps as color. And so now I can compare my uh, reference sphere on the left with my projection sphere on the right. And you can see that just like we did in Unreal, I've created this shader so that uh, all of the colors on my projection sphere match my reference sphere. And I love this about shaders that you can, uh, you can view the data visually and you can tell visually uh, if your math is working correctly. We have tons of complicated math going on here, um, but I can look at it and tell it that it's visually correct um, because all of the colors are lining up the same. That's just, that's something that's absolutely beautiful about shaders. Okay, so here we are in the material that we're making, and I've gone ahead and made all the adjustments. Uh, so I'm gonna walk you through what I did. So up here we have our X projection, and you can see that uh, I've connected to um, the output of our normal map, a swizzle node to rearrange the channels. So just like we did in Unreal, we're rearranging the channels, and I've swizzled these to Z, Y, X, so that they're going in that order. And then I'm splitting out the channels and I'm doing the multiply, add, add to combine them with our world space vertex normal. Uh, so let's go down and take a look at that. Here's our world space vertex normal. We'll grab him and pull him up here. You can see that I'm 
taking my world space vertex normal and multiplying the X, the Y, and the Z, or adding the Y and the Z, multiplying the X. And then uh, we're taking the blue channel and we're flipping it just like we did in Unreal using the sign of our vertex normal. So for X, I'm using uh, the X of the sign. For my Y projection, I'm using the Y of the sign. And for my Z projection, I'm using the Z of the sign. Okay, so for our Z projection, I'm swizzling and using X, Z, Y. And then I do a add, multiply, add with uh, the vertex normal, the world space vertex normal. And for uh, my red channel coming out, I'm flipping that so that it uh, is flipped on the back side. And then for my Z projection, instead of doing a swizzle, I'm just doing a multiply. And let's open this up to take a look at what I'm multiplying. I'm just multiplying negative one, 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 one. So I'm basically flipping the X component uh, so that it's inverted. And the Y or the Z projection can just project as is without needing to be swizzled. It just needs uh, the red channel to be flipped. So then I split it out and I do an add, add, multiply to combine it with uh, our world space normal vector and then I'm flipping the red channel to the opposite side um, based on the sine of uh, Z. Okay and then just like in Unreal I uh, combine my components back together for each of the X, Y, and Z axes and then I pass those into the lerp, blend between the X and the Y and then blend between that and the Z and then I transform from world space to tangent space and pass it into my master stack. So pretty similar to the way that it was done in Unreal. I'm doing all of the exact same things. Multiply, add, 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 multiply, add, 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 multiply. And then just flipping a few things around so that they match. And bingo, we've got our... Uh, world space projected normal maps. And I know that it's pretty complicated and it's a lot of math, but the results that you end up with are all accurate. They're, they're correct. Um, and they work really well. So I hope you, that you've enjoyed this tutorial. I think what I'll do this time around is find a way to share these files with you because I know that there was a lot of complex throwing nodes around. Uh, and it wasn't exactly clear all the time what was happening. So I'm going to try to share these files down in the comments section, or sorry, down in the description. Um, let me know if that's helpful and if you can use that as a reference to, to learn how to do it yourself. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's helpful for you to learn how to do uh, normal map projection, uh, triplanar projection, and world space, and that you can use these for uh, all kinds of cool... Uh, shader effects in your own projects. Have a great week, everybody, and we'll see you next time.